The most common question that I get asked, which is the best drone to buy for beginners? Let's find out. The markets today are flooded with varieties of drones. There is plethora of options around different kinds of quadcopters and some of them cost around thousands of dollars. If you're in the market to buy a new quad and you want nothing but the best, the DJI Inspire is an advanced quadcopter, weighing around 3 kilos and costing about $2,000. But if you want something slightly more affordable, take a look at the Phantom series. It's been around for quite some time now and is literally the benchmark of ready-to-fly quadcopters, weighing around 1.3 kilos and will set you back about $800. You can check out the video where I've compared the Phantom and Inspire. I'll leave a link in the description below. So finally, if you're looking for something much more reasonably priced, especially with an intention to learn how to fly these devices without worrying about crashing or damaging them, consider the Cheerson CX-10, which is ridiculously tiny, weighing 11 grams and costs $16. To give you a size perspective of how small this quadcopter is, here's the DJI Inspire, and that's the Phantom, and here we have the Cheerson CX-10. But don't let the size fool you, these tiny quadcopters inherit the exact same flying characteristics of fully featured quadcopters like the ones I mentioned before. And not only is it tiny enough to fly indoors, it can also take a lot of beatings and crashes. So if you want to get a sense of how these devices operate, especially before you spend hundreds and thousands of dollars indulging in the quadcopter hobby, I think you should have one of these. And if you already own a professional quadcopter, it's always a good idea to fine tune your flying skills with something that will not dig a hole in your pocket in case you lose or damage it. It's surprising how they managed to assemble the motors, ESCs, flight controller and the battery into such a tiny package. In fact, the aircraft in this case is smaller than its own controller, which runs on two AAA batteries. The controller operates similar to the bigger quadcopters. The left throttle stick is for controlling the altitude and rotation and the right stick is for moving the quad in different directions. There are trim adjustments available, so if your quad continuously drifts in a certain direction, you can fine-tune that by pressing these trim buttons. Starting it up is simple, you first turn on the quadcopter and then the controller and then you wait for a couple of beeps and you're ready to fly. There's also a headless mode, the feature that I was not expecting on such an inexpensive quadcopter. This mode is called as the course lock on the Phantom and Inspire. To explain this, the way every quadcopter behaves in the standard mode is, when you push the forward stick, the quad goes forward. Now if you change the orientation 90 degrees to the left and then push the forward stick, the quad goes this way because this is the new forward in its new orientation. But the headless mode enables the quad to go forward in the original direction, irrespective of the orientation of the quad. It'll still go forward in the same direction no matter which way the quad is turned. And that is good for beginners to start with. The overall performance of this quad is definitely not as stable as the bigger ones, but don't get me wrong, it's not very difficult to get a hang of it, and it's actually a lot of fun to learn how to fly it. There's of course no GPS on it, but it does have a gyroscope that automatically levels the quadcopter. If you observe here, when I tilt it on one side, the propellers on the other side stop spinning, and the opposite ones spin faster to compensate for the tilt and bring it back to a leveled position. So it does have certain level of stability, but still you will have to keep fiddling with the controller sticks continuously. You cannot take your hands off the controller and expect the quad to hover at a constant position like how the Phantom or Inspire does. And that reminds me, it's a pretty challenging subject to photograph while it's flying. So if you want to sharpen your photography skills, this quad can give some serious hide and seek kind of competition to your camera's autofocusing system. I had a tough time focusing on it, but eventually I did manage to get some sharp and focused pictures after some practice. There's one thing that the bigger quads like the Inspire and Phantom cannot do, but this tiny little quad does it like a boss. Flips. This acrobatic function is built right into it and it adds to the fun factor. All you need to do is push in the right stick like a click and move the same stick in any direction you want the quad to flip, and that's about it. There's a bit of learning involved in pulling the throttle back soon after it flips around, but once you get there, you'll love showing off this cool little trick. The battery time on this quad is not very impressive. They last for around 5-6 to six minutes on a full charge. However, they charge up pretty fast. It takes around 8 minutes for it to fully charge up and you're back in the air again. On the positive side, these are extremely durable quadcopters. I decided to intentionally crash this into the wall a couple of times to give you an idea of what I mean. 
And trust me, I crash this every now and then and it's as good as new and still running on the original set of propellers. By the way, you do get an extra set of propellers in the package along with the USB charger and the user manual and the quadcopter itself. There are a few other quadcopters that are tinier than this one and there's another version of the same quad that has a camera on it. But those are double the price and not significantly different when you consider the purpose. And flying this mini quadcopter requires slightly more maneuvering skills than the bigger ones. So if you master this, flying an Inspire or a Phantom is a piece of cake. It's hard to imagine how much this technology could have costed 15 years back and considering the price it sells at today, I think it's a no-brainer for anyone who desires to learn how to practice operating a drone. For more such videos, please do subscribe and hit the like button. Thank you.